Hello, I'm Dr. Al Gilman, I'm Dean of the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center. Um, spent 40 years of my career doing biomedical research. We found the, we found the, the, the pieces of the system in, in, in the cells, in the, in the outside membrane of the cells that allowed them to sense that signal and pass it on to the inside. It's really a very complicated network. It's really a switchboard in the, in the, in the cell membrane that controls all sorts of different signals coming in from the outside and having all sorts of effects inside. Well, and there's a huge increase in the, in the basic understanding of how things work. But it's also appreciated that, that, that these systems, uh, that they're, they're called G-protein coupled receptors and the G-proteins and the other molecules they communicate with. This is one of the most important places, particularly those receptors in the, in the body where a whole bunch of different drugs act. Um, so people have used this information to, for new ways to screen for drugs and discover, discover drugs and have used this information uh, for um, new appreciation of mechanisms of disease, both. Well, research is always going to be my first love, I think. And there's something about exploring and discovery, finding something, learning something that nobody else found before that is that's a real rush. That's what gets people into research. It's exciting. Uh, can have a huge impact. Um, put it in context. This is a big research operation here. We have as we said, thousands of people involved in research um, in all of these buildings you see around here. We spend something on the order of 350 to 400 million dollars a year in research, roughly. Um, a similar amount, for example, not exactly the same, but a similar amount at MD Anderson, similar amount at Baylor, um, and other schools in the state as well. But but this is an increment, an increment, cancer directed, cancer focused, approximately equal to all of the research that already goes on, for example, at this place right now. So that's a big increment. A big responsibility to spend it well. Uh, we can learn a tremendous amount and we'll make a lot of progress. But we can't over promise and um, we can't, the, the public shouldn't believe that just because this is a lot of money and we will be able to do a lot, that all our cancer is going to be cured in 10 years. That's not going to happen. But we will make huge progress. Yeah, radioactive isotopes can be used, are used more and more to treat um, prostate cancer um, because you can immobilize the isotope on a, on, a, on a bead, small bead, and inject it directly into the gland and there. You know, localize it that way. You keep it there, so you keep the damage local. The use of radioactive isotopes in, in biomedical research, in, in discovery in biomedical research, absolutely crucial. We, we must have it. It's really a volume problem, right? It's a huge, it's a big barrels full. Correct. Not that much radioactivity. Just, a, just, just stuff. It's, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah it just the, takes the up The tissue space. paper and everything yeah. else. Well, we count on others to uh, dispose it for us. We, we generate all this material. Um, it's, it's really not very hazardous, but it must be treated properly. And we can't just toss it in the corner and let it pile up. It would fill the laboratory after a little while. So proper disposal is critical. We can't do the research if we can't dispose of the material. Um, and um, it's a problem that people have tried to ignore for a long time and um, can't ignore it. It's good to be responsible, and uh, it's good to make progress. The, the responsibility and the progress have to go hand in hand. Everything we did was dependent on the use of, of a variety of different radioactive isotopes.